All right. This is the second time I'm doing this. This is Maglin coming at you. I'm going to be going over how to install Clipper onto a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using a Model 3B Plus. Uh, we're going to install the Voron gantry leveling. I'm going to install the config. Um, these are all things that I've already done multiple times. <clears throat> I will try to cover some areas that people always seem to have issues with. And uh, hopefully in this one video, which is not going to be that short, uh, we can get all this taken care of. So. Uh, I'm just going to be showing my display here instead of uh, trying to show all these different windows and whatnot. So the first thing we need to do is we need OctoPi. I already have 15.01 downloaded. Um, I already have it on this SD card, but what I'm going to do is we're going to start fresh. So we use SD formatter. Choose your, your drive you want to... Hmm, we'll see. It automatically makes two drives. So what I'm going to do is go into ad my administrative tools and windows here I'll show you guys this go to computer management of course it opens up another tool over here go to disk management All right. once this opens up we want to go to our SD card and there's our SD card right here get rid of these partitions Goodbye. Shouldn't take too horribly long. There we go. All right, now I have a empty SD card. Hit the old refresh button here. Now we only show one uh, drive because it's a drive letter. Um, the SD formatter. Hey, honey. The SD formatter uh, is the preferred tool for formatting uh, SD cards. So. Um, it's what I use, at least initially. Um, some options that I have, uh, I usually like to turn on format size adjustment. And I always use quick because we don't have an hour for this. Yep, yep, I'm going to lose everything. Go ahead. Quick as that. Next thing, uh, we're going to use the this RM Prep USB. And what we're going to do with this is we are going to install uh, OctoPrint. So it's real simple to do. All you got to do is open it up, go to File Drive. Hey, look at that. It automatically goes to the last place I went to. Um, and you just keep everything default. Hit OK. Hit OK. Hit OK. Hit OK. And we're going to sit here and watch this go to work. It's going to take a few minutes. I will probably edit. I'll probably edit this out. Uh, maybe I won't. Because... Yeah. My kids are coming home from school, so you guys got to deal with that. My Voron's currently printing some test prints. I'm, I've been playing around with uh, uh, working on my acceleration again. I'm back to 5,000 acceleration uh, using my 10 millimeters a second corner velocity. Uh, it's been working pretty good for me. Also, I'm always playing around with slicer settings. I'm always trying to find the perfect, well, there's no perfect slicer setting. Uh, but I'm trying to wrangle in a few things that I've been dealing with, mainly uh, under extrusion. One of the things I've noticed with Clipper is the step rate is so accurate that um, at 100% uh, extrusion multiplier with 1.75 for my filament, uh, it's under extruding just a smidge, and that under extrusion is because my filament is actually 1.70 to 1.71. So um, I've been playing around with just changing the actual filament diameter to what the filament actually is, and guess what? My slight under extrusions went away. My walls became looking uh, started looking better. I get a little bit of that. Uh, 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 what do you want to call it? People think it's the belt. Uh, going over going over smooth services uh, showing up on their prints. Um, I think it has more to do with the drivers you're using. And it's done. Look at that. We are done there. We don't need the computer management stuff anymore. What we do need is to open up the SD card. Here it is here. It made a G drive, which we cannot see because that's formatted in, uh, U uh, what's it formatted in? EXF. 
EXT, something like that. Um, what we need to do is we need to go in here and we need to go to Octopi WPA Supplicant. This is this is where we're going to set up our Wi-Fi. So I'm going to take this off screen, but you leave the spaces. So you put your SSID there, you put your password here, you leave the quotations. Um, obviously, you're going to be using a secured. <laughs> I hope you're using a secured network. Um, all the different things in here uh, are, are the things for your particular region. So I'm going to comment out United Kingdom and put in United States. That's for your uh, NTP, I believe, uh, your network uh, time protocol, uh, basically where you're located. Uh, do do. You should not change the lines below this. I've never up. I never. I've never messed with that. All right. All we need to do is. Oh, you have to uncomment network. Duh. So, uncomment this stuff. This line is very important. Uncomment as well. Here. I'm gonna take this off screen. I'm inputting my SSID and my par my uh, passphrase. Saving that. All right. Now it's on my uh, USB card. I'm gonna pull it out. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna stick it in the Pi. You'll have to excuse me, I've been using, uh, <clears throat> I'm using a boom microphone here, uh, and if I'm not real close to it, I'm sure you guys are hearing, uh, or not being able to hear me real well. Uh, we're going to use a program called Putty. You can just download it, you can just Google Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. All you need is the Putty SSH program right here. That's what we're going to use to do the majority of our, uh, of our work on this particular pie. So, what's my IP address? Uh, give me a second to find that real quick. There it is. My IP address is for Octopi that's online. 25. I'm going to put in my, my IP address. We're SSHing. I'm going to save this. Uh, we'll call this uh, let's call it Clipper. Hit save. Now I can just double click on that. This obviously isn't my default window, so i got to keep pulling this stuff over. This warning comes up, it's because it's using an unsigned certificate. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to communicate. All right, we're going to log in uh, as Pi. And I believe the default is Raspberry. A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Hey, look at that. And we are in. Our Pi is online. One of the first things I like to do is update my libraries. So uh, this isn't completely necessary, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. We're not going to go through it because it takes a long time. Uh, you have several different things you could do. You look at the command prompt here. Um, let's see here. Can I make the text a little bit bigger for you? Uh, I think I can. Uh, let's see here. Um, Nope, I thought that said it. Uh, yeah, here we go. We want I'll look to see if I can make the text a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better. And it doesn't look like I can, which makes no sense here. Ah, 
There we go. We'll change this to 16 point font. There we go. Now you guys could really see that. Oh, it got so big. It hurts my eyes. It's so big, but now you can see it. All right. You have a couple commands right now. Uh, you'll see that it says pi at octopi uh, with a tilde and a dollar sign. The dollar sign is just showing that you're in you're in an unprivileged user. You cannot uh, run administrative commands. So if we were to do an apt-get update, uh, which I'm ty I just type AP, I can hit tab. Oh, too many. Apt, you don't, it's the actual command's apt get. You don't have to type in the get. Uh, you can just do apt update. Well, look at that. It's actually getting, going to the libraries. Oh, look at that. It's not permitted. But if we do a sudo, that's, give, that's given us uh, administrative privileges uh, for this one command apt update ooh I forgot forgot the most important thing oh man rasp berry there we go we need to change the password. Now, I always have to Google this, so all I ever do is I just Google. And I'll just show, I'll bring it over here while it's doing its thing. Linux, because we're running Linux. Password. I think that's all we need to do. Ah, it's as simple as that. Uh, I think it's password. P A S S W D. All right, so we're going to change the password. So P A S S W D password for this account. I got to type in the current password. Raspberry, and then the password I want to give it, which I'm obviously not going to tell you. Oops, I just hacked that all to hell. There we go. And now we have a new password. So, uh, something really nice that people don't, a lot of people don't know about Putty is it makes it so easy to copy paste. I just highlight that with a left click. Um, we're going to see what's available to update. Um, apt. Oh, look at this. I'll, I'll go even one further. We'll see what's upgradable. I just highlighted it and I'm going to right click. There we go. There is a few things that can be upgraded, but we are not going to bother with any of that. Uh, what we will do is we will go to Clipper. So I've been there a few times. Um, I'm going to go to the main Clipper page. Uh, just real quick, I'm going to see. Oh, we've gotten some updates the last couple of days. Uh, we want to clone download. We want to copy this link to our clipboard. We'll come here and we will do a git clone. And that link. Hmm. Let me let me set you even straighter. We're gonna to go to the docs. We're gonna to go to installation. All right. It's telling you what to do. Look at that. Git clone. What we already did. I was making sure we were doing things right. So first thing you need to do is install OctoPy because it runs on OctoPy. It, Mainly, we'll have all the libraries it needs, and we're going to get clone this into Clipper. It is done, and now we need to run the install script. This is going to install Clipper and all the uh, required uh, libraries that it needs. I'm not sure. I'm assuming we don't we don't need administrative privileges. I don't have a microcontroller here that I could flash for you. I'm using them all, but I'll cover I'll cover all of this. Yeah, well I have this. Let me let's see here. Maybe I can flash this Uno. I got this Uno sitting right here. It's just it's 
being used for something else right now. This takes a few minutes to run. Uh, while we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, clipper. I'm going to grab the clipper uh, script uh, program, basically, from our clipper channel. You go to building support, clipper mini controllers. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this off screen. Uh, go to the pinned items. And look at that. There's a gantry level pie that I pinned. I'm just going to hit the old download link. Download this. There it is, gantry level. I already have one there, but I'm going to replace it. Just in my downloads. Gantry level pie. Hit the old save roo. Yes, I want to save it. It is saved. Why is that? I thought I deleted you. Go away. If you do not have Notepad++, you should probably get it. Uh, just Google Notepad++, just like that. Go to the download page and download the whatever installer you need for the operating system you're running on. I already have it installed. I'm not going to install it. But something in Notepad that you need to have installed, which I'll pull it up here real quick. Uh, Close that. All right, that's currently a printer config. Um, I'll just disconnect. Uh, this this area right here uh, is the uh, Notepad plus plus FTP. And how you install that is you go to. It's been a little while since I've done this. Uh, plugins. How do I install this? I swore I went to a repository. We're still setting up our, our pie, so I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm not wasting time right now. I'm just kind of. Ah, plugin manager. That's where I wanted to go. So, show plugin manager. You got all these available plugins here. You want to look for NPP FTP, which I'm probably not going to see it since I already have it installed. Nope. Well, I got some updates. Let's go ahead and update those guys. Sure. Nope, don't need that anymore. All right, but you'd go to the plugin manager, find the plugin you want, Notepad Plus, NPP, FTP. Uh, once you find it, click on it, click install. It'll install. I already have it installed. And I believe you have to come here, go to, go to NPP, FTP, show the window, and then that will bring you this window. You need to go to settings profile settings uh, the host name of the one you want to go to so I have two here right uh, this happens to be uh, currently running my Voron this is the one we're playing with it's on uh, dot 25 we want to do a uh, secure FTP connection I think it's on FTP by default uh, and it should pick the the correct ports I don't change the username of the Pi. I, I just leave it as Pi. I already have it. Uh, my password's already there. Once you do that, your profiles will show up here. I can go to MPCNC Clipper, which is this ran my MPCNC. And will again. Uh, but I'm installing this stuff for you guys. And it goes right to our home directory. So uh, the way this stuff kind of works, uh, this to go to the root directory, trains directory, forward slash... We'll put us to root, um, and if we do a list, uh, you know, it shows us, shows us everything in the root directory. Uh, I don't think. Oh, so if you have a question about a command, um, you could do a man, which stands for manual, and then the command, 
and then it'll go through all these all the available uh, switches and whatnot that are available for the command you can hit Q to get out of that you can do that for just about any command so uh, a lot of things people don't understand it with Linux is deleting files um, you're actually going to use the remove files uh, another thing is renaming or moving files uh, let's see Oh, I messed up. I can't remember what it is now. It's been a while. I always Google stuff when I can't figure it out. Uh, anyway, one of the first things you do, one of the first things I do just about every day is uh, we're gonna change directory cd, and we're gonna go into the Clipper directory. Oh, we're not in home anymore. So if you just ls, it, 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 it's all big. Uh, ls uh, with the switch of l, which stands for list, and then if I hit up on my keyboard. It does my last command. I can actually scroll through commands. Uh, LSH. Uh, H stands for human readable. So if you see here, um, this, these are in bytes. Now it puts it into more human readable uh, format. Uh, we want to go back home, so we're just CD home. But we are not in the Pi directory. So if you look here, see there's a Pi directory that comes automatically. So we need to go into the Pi. If I hit P and I then hit colon, I'm sorry, not colon, tab. Uh, it auto fills it in. Now, there is our uh, Clipper install along with OctoPrint. Uh, I'm going to go into Clipper, uh, CD, KL, Tab, but there's Clippy and Clipper. I want to go into Clipper. Now, uh, if you want to update Clipper, all you have to do is come in here and do a git pull. We've already installed it. It, we just we just installed it from uh, the distribution from the repo, so it's up to date. Uh, you can change your head here too. So uh, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, is there a man page for the git command? There is. There's a lot of stuff you can do with git. Um, I wouldn't recommend you uh, get too in the weeds with git, but just know that uh, you can do a lot with git and GitHub. Uh, so. <laughs> Knowing how to use Git is going to help you a lot. It helps me quite a bit. I, I forget more stuff than I learn every day, so I always have to relearn stuff. Um, we have Clipper in. Uh, we need to uh, navigate to it. So 192.168.1.25. That should take us to Octoprint. Look at that, first time set up. So, we'll just make this full screen, right? Yeah, we'll use the wizard. It doesn't hurt. So, it's a good idea to set up a username and password. I do for everything. Uh, I'm Aglin. We wanna keep access control enabled. This will allow, uh, this will require you, now it says enabled down here, this will require you to log in with a username and password. Um, Almost every time. Connectivity check. Uh, I just set up a firewall, so I actually want to check my connectivity. Uh, I don't want to use 888. Pod 9. Alright, it is enabled. So it, it can. It, what that means is it can see the outside, so the update server will work. Uh, we want to enable the blacklist processing. That'll, that'll stop you from being able to install any old plugins that are no longer... Uh, that it no longer works with the current version of OctoPrint. I do not have a profile to import because uh, I don't use Cura 15.04. I use Cura, what is it now, 3.4, 3.2.4, whatever the newest Cura is. Uh, so I said next. Uh, let's set up a printer here. So we are doing this for Voron 2. Right? I can't change the identifier. Uh, this is an MZ bot. Mzbot rep wrap printer. Uh, set up your build space. Uh, your origin, most people, was lower left. Uh, you use circular form factor, obviously, for a delta. We do have a heated bed. Uh, my width is 250. 250. 250. I'm not going to bother with custom bounding box, but when you have problems with uh, uh, opto lapse, it's a good idea to come in here. 
can put in some custom sizes. So uh, I'm not going to get into using octo laps. It's pretty good. As you can see, I'm making everything a little bit bigger. Um, this will allow it to uh, basically not go out of bounds. Uh, set up your feed rates in millimeters a minute. Uh, this also inverts your control. Uh, if you have your controller set up correctly, you don't need to invert anything. Uh, but uh, I travel at 300 millimeters a second. That is 18,000. I am able to travel at uh, 500. That's why I have it set up in my config. And E is 50. So the quick, easiest way to figure that out, let me pull up the calculator here, is we'll take 50, multiply that by 60, because you know what? There are 60 seconds in a minute. How about I do that right? 50 times 60, that gives us 3,000. So 3,000. In our E, in our Z, I mean, in E, I, it really doesn't matter. Uh, but this is the feed rate that E will run uh, when you do commands through control. So I'm going to go to my uh, current profile because I actually had to set that up a little, a little, it wasn't as intuitive as I thought. 300 worked out really good for the E. All right, hot end and extruder. This doesn't matter, but you can leave it as default. We're going to hit next. Yes, yes, yes. Save printing. We'll finish. All right, so we now have Clipper. We now have Octoprint running. We are logged in. And uh, we see our printer here. Uh, but we need to do some more setup here. And guess what? There's this nice little thing here uh, to help us with that. So move that over here. We'll put that there. And we'll put that there. Look at that. So we need to go back into here. We're going to go into, we'll just follow this. Uh, do, do, do. Under serial connection. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is under, right in front of my face. Uh, serial port. And additional serial ports. Oh, i got to scroll down here. Right here. See, it's been a little while. We're going to add temp printer. So let's add temp printer. Hit the old save button. Then we're going to go back into the settings tab. We're going to choose temp printer. Go to the behavior sub tab. Uh, cancel any ongoing uh, print jobs to stay connected to the printer. <laughs> We're going to check that, hit save, all right, we still need to configure Clipper a little bit. How about I, I'll take this Uno and I'm going to attach it to my Raspberry Pi here. You can't see it because I'm not running a camera. There we go. My Uno is connected. Um, should be working. I don't know what I have flashed on it. So let's see if it connects. Yeah, I'll leave that at auto. Put serial port. I'm going to hit the old refresh button here. There we go. Oh, there's an update to auto print. We'll ignore that for now. All right, I'm gonna hit connect, see what happens. It connected, you go to terminal. This should not come up, yeah. We haven't done anything yet. We haven't actually configured Clipper. All right. Now we're going to go back to 
our putty and we need to actually do we don't need to use putty for this but what we do need to do is we need to install that gantry leveling in here and a few other things so I'm going to disconnect there's no reason for it to be connected there we're going to go to notepad uh, we are connected uh, we need to get a uh, an example configuration so what we will do here is it's been a little bit I believe it's under clippy clipper config like at that kit voron 2 I'm just going to open that up and we'll go back to the pi directory I'm going to go ahead here I'm going to rename this to printer.cfg Oh, if you look here, it actually is it's doing the copy command. You're copying uh, the config from here, moving it to there, uh, and then using nano, uh, which is a text editor inside uh, Linux. What I am doing is I'm saving this Why is it not showing? Well, look at that. Now I don't know what the heck's going on. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna go ahead and upload this. There we go. Now it's there. So this file, which is our default Clipper configuration, uh, this is the one that came with Clipper. Uh, mine's changed quite a bit from that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the one I'm using now, and I'm gonna stick it here. Okay. And then I'm gonna save it. If you look down here. Uh, this is the uh, secure FTP. Uh, you'll see that it, it writes successfully. What it's doing is it's writing this, this printer config file there every time we do that. We need to install that gantry leveling. Uh, so we're, we're going to go ahead and just open. Uh, where did I save that? I know where I saved that. I saved it to downloads. Uh, date modify. There it is. Here is the actual code. Uh, there's quite a bit to it. Make sure this is okay. This is the, the newest version. <laughs> Uh, what we're doing is we're going to go to the Clippy environment. Why did I say Clippy? We're going to go to Clipper. And then we're going to go to Clippy. Right? And then we're going to go to Extras. And inside Extras is where we're going to stick this file. We have it open. It's currently got focus. We're going to go ahead and click the Upload File button here. Uh, we will see it pop in there, Gantry Level Py. Dot .py. Uh, it's a Python script. Uh, we'll come back over here, and what we're going to do is I'm going to back out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart Clipper. Uh, we need uh, elevated privileges to do that. So sudo sudo service Clipper restart. Easy as that. It just restarted the Clipper service. Now if we come over here, refresh this. So right now you see it is just one gantry level pot, py. So I hit the old refresh button. Now everything has gotten a PYC. I'm not sure what Clipper is doing there with that, but this will work now uh, with uh, the gantry level file. It is now in there. There's gantry level. There's the PYC that I made. Uh, I'm going to start at the top of this and I'll work my way down. Uh, so we're using two different ramps. Uh, we need to flash both of those. I only have one available right now. So what we're going to do is we'll just comment this one out. Uh, bulk comment. Hit save. Actually, that's not going to work real well. Let's uh, undo that. 
it, was, it just won't connect. Hmm. Maybe I should use a different printer. No, I'll keep. I'll just go through this. So we've installed the Get Your Level Pi uh, code. I got it from the Discord. We're coming down over here. Uh, let's use the very handy uh, file that we got here for installing Clipper. Uh, so that was the Clipper installation. <laughs> We did not. We kind of. I kind of went right past this part. Um, so we got to go into Clipper. And then we're going to do a make menu config. We're going to choose the target for our configuration. This happens to be an Uno. Uh, so it is an AVR. What is the processor on the Uno, though? Three twenty eight Papa. So 328. The speed leave alone. You have to re you have to replace crystals to change that. Leave the baud rate. We are not doing a simulation. So we are going to hit the old save button here and just enter a few times. Exit. Alright. Then every time I, before I flash anything, I do a make clean. What that does is it deletes the uh, directory that it, it will make during make. Now we just do a make. What it's going to do is it's going to use that file. Uh, basically, it, it makes a file uh, from that make config and says what we need to compile into our firmware to flash the controller. All right. So something it kind of doesn't talk about here, uh, most likely. It's going to be device TTY ACMO, uh, but I'm going to show you something here. We're going to go back. Almost everything you need is in the documents here. I'm going to go to docs. We're going to go to the FAC, right? They got a lot of good stuff in here. So in here, uh, you can run this uh, list command by ID for your USBs. I should only have one. Uh, and look at that. Is a genuine Uno. Uh, doubt that. Anyway. The nice thing about this is I have a unique ID right here, and that's what we're going to use uh, for our config. Uh, but it is TTY ACMO0, so we need to stop the Clipper service before we flash. We'll stop. We're going to flash our, our device here. Go back to the actual. We're going to flash our device. How about I actually copy? Copy, right click. Now it's going to flash. It gives me an error because I have an M328P. Did I just miss it? So let's go back. We're going to do a make clean, and make config. Make menu config. <laughs> huh. Well, ain't that about I can't uh I can't use the Uno? Now I'm a little lost. Huh, let's see here.
Maybe the Uno is not. That's gonna suck. This just happens to be what I have handy. I don't have another. Yeah, I do. I just gotta grab it. Give me a second. Oh, grab a mega. This is over here. Just being lazy. Alright. So, grab me a mega, because that's what we're gonna be using. I don't know why I just didn't go look for that to begin with. Uh, unplugged my Uno. Move that out of the way. We'll plug in the Mega. We'll give it a few seconds for it to register. We're going to change this back up to 2560 because that's what the Mega uses. We're going to save it. We're going to exit. We're going to make. I already did a make clean before I went in here. But now we have a new device ID, so let's. I just scrolled up back through there. There we go. Uh, back to the installation, because look at that. Everything you need is given. We haven't restarted Clipper yet. Now it's got a flash, it's pretty quick. And we need to start the Clipper service. Now we can go back to OctoPrint. We can connect. In terminal, you just do a status. It'll tell you where it is going wrong. My printer is not ready. Oh, I didn't give it enough time. It still shouldn't be ready though. If you type in help, it'll give you a list of things you can do. Uh, Let's suppress these temperature messages. I'm going to do a firmware restart. Oh, look at that. I don't have anything hooked up to this Mega, so I don't expect it to do much. Oh, it's because I only have one device. It's trying to connect to two. So, in my config here, right? This is the config we're in. I'll close it, reopen it to make sure we're in the right one. All right, I got two MCUs listed. I am going to just comment out one. Let's bulk comment. There it is. We're gonna go back here. I'm gonna get my device ID. So if you look here, it's the entire ID from USB. So this whole thing is the ID. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna stick it right here. I'm gonna replace this with that. There we go. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go back to the terminal here. And I'm going to do a firmware restart. Now it's halted because I have stuff to find to the MCUZ, but it is now able to see it. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to do too much inside here. Uh, what I can do is we can do help now that it's connected. Uh, oh, it needs to actually connect all the way. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you kind of what it looks like on my uh, Voron 2 here. I'll just bring this into focus. This is my Voron 2. I just finished printing. Uh, let's suppress all of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, if I do a status, it should be ready. If I do a help, every command that's available shows up. Uh, I haven't uh, changed uh, a lot of things. So some of the stuff I have in here, uh, bed mesh map, I do not use it, but I've added it to the configuration for other people to use it. Um, you have various different things you can do uh, to do your to use your bed uh, visualizer. You need to utilize the bed mesh output. Um, kind of going in the weeds on some stuff. We're just talking about getting Clipper in. Uh, but the things you're going to be concerned with is gantry level. Uh, we want to use gantry level. We do not want to need, we don't need to use Z, uh, what is it, Z tilt? It's not Z tilt. Um, it is Z tilt. We don't use Z tilt anymore. That's for a fixed, that is not for a fixed bed. That's for a moving bed. 
uh, with a gantry that is fixed. We can move our gantry and twist it a little bit to make up for a bed that is a parabola or the potato chip as we like to call them. Anyway, so this is what it would look like uh, if it once it connects. Status. Bell things, right? Anyway, I'm going to put that back off screen. We need to configure a few things. So let's just go over that. What we've done so far is we've installed Octopi, we've installed Clipper, we've installed the gantry leveling, uh, the gantry level uh, extra into Clipper. Uh, we've copied the config over. Um, I'm using, I just copied my config that I'm currently using on my current printer. Um, I've tried to put as many comments in here as possible about what goes where. Uh, so the way I have stuff labeled here, I'm just gonna uncomment this. Uh, this is the MCU Z. This is the name. It'll be used elsewhere. This is the MCU for the Z steppers, and then this, the, they're just one labeled MCU is for X Y E. If you want to have a third one and have just X Y, and then have extruders. So if you have two or three or four mixing extruders, you're probably gonna want to put those on a separate board. Not something supported in Voron, but if you want to go more than one extruder at the same time to do some mixing, then you're going to want to probably move that off the board. Uh, let me show you why. Uh, so my printer just got finished printing. Uh, I wasn't even printing that fast. I was just doing some... Uh, uh, some random uh, test prints here. I'm going to go to my Clippy log, which is the newest one. We're going to analyze that log. Uh, from the looks of it, I might need to go to the, another log. Oh, no. Nope. Here we go. So these are the two test prints I did. This red graph part of the graph right here is the MCU load. This is running at 70 uh, millimeters a second. And you can see my MCU loads right about 40, uh, 40, 45. Uh, if I go to some older stuff, let's see here. Uh, let's go to this. Let's see, let's see what that log looks like. Although it does look pretty massive. There should be some 120 millimeters a second printing going on. It does not separate out the MCUs. Uh, so it's a little hard to see uh, what MCU is doing what. But here you can see this is, this is my printer running at 120 millimeters a second. Uh, the MCU uh, is you know, going up into the 60s and 70 percentile. That's quite a bit. This green is just buffer every time it starts or, or whatnot. If, there, if, if things get stacked and it's doing a gantry level, which I'm pretty sure that's what's going on in all of these right here. I just started new prints right out, or, you know, back to back to back. Uh, every time I start a print, uh, I do a gantry level, follow or do a home, gantry level, some other stuff, and the, the host buffer just gets full because there's not much of a buffer on the uh, 2560. So, at least, at least with the way Clipper runs on it. <clears throat> This is why I say if you want to run more than one extruder, um, you're going to add a lot more overhead. You're going to want to just move your extruders off to another board. One of the beauties of Clipper is you can just keep adding MCUs. Uh, we got four USB ports on a Raspberry Pi, so you can add four uh, megas to it. You can add, uh, obviously, we cannot add a Uno, which I just found out. I was hoping to use it, actually, as a stepper uh, or as an extruder uh, driver, but it looks like I'm not doing that now. At least not at the moment. Uh, so we we start off with our stepper sections. Uh, we got our X stepper. Um, the way uh, most of these pins, when you're defining pins, works. Um, if you put a exclamation point, it will invert the logic, meaning that if if on is one, uh, if you invert that, then on becomes zero. Uh, one, I believe, is high. Zero is low. Low is ground, high is generally 3.3 volts or 5 volts, whichever it may be. So uh, that's, that's why you see uh, these in here. Um, if, the, if the pin has an internal pull-up available, uh, putting in the uh, carrot, which is this guy right here, which you see right here in front of my in-stop pins, uh, activates the pull-up. So that means that the, uh, the actual uh, MCU, the pin is actually pulled high. And what we are doing with our end stop is we are grounding that or pulling it low. 
So when your end stops don't work, you need to try inverting them uh, or doing a few other things I'll show you on my machine. Now that I realize I could just show you some of the stuff on my instance of uh, Octoprint on how to do some troubleshooting. Um, step distance. This should be pretty standard for everyone. You can leave that alone. You'll need to change your end stop positions for your specific machine. Uh, so I have my X set to zero. I could actually go to minus five. I just choose not to. There's no reason for it. I don't have anything over there. Uh, but I but it does end at 257. Uh, that's that's where the end stop actually hits. Uh, I give it one more millimeter so I can press against that end stop and I can get a little bit more out of my nozzle clean routine. And then you change your homing speed here. And we are homing on the Voron 2 to max for X and Y. So you want to change your homing positive direction to true. Again, if you're using my config, you don't have to do that. Just make sure that it's in there that way. And, and then every other stepper is the same. I actually, it's funny, I just realized I didn't uh, add a comment on my stepper here. So like Y stepper in on MCU. Your end stops and your steppers for those end stops for that axis must be on the same uh, Arduino, the MCU. So all the Z steppers are on their own. Your first one sets up the majority of the parameters. Uh, step distance, you actually can change uh, per each one. I actually dialed mine in to be exact. And what you end up with when you do that is you end up with layer inconsistencies because you know we're doing everything in 0 0.2, 0 0.15. Uh, whatnot. This is the Voron 2.1, which has a resolution of 0 0.0025 millimeters using 1 16th micro stepping. So that's quite a bit. I'm actually thinking about going to 1 8th micro stepping and uh, seeing how uh, doing that doesn't uh, uh, help my uh, load a little bit. But I mean, these are things that probably don't really matter. That's why I haven't touched it yet. Uh, the big thing here on your Z is a lot of people get confused here you got pos the position end stop for your z this is your mechanical end stop um, so as i've said here you got a mechanical switch i have it on my x max on the ramps board which is the ar2 pin uh, it is on the z the mcu z so uh, it's it's defined as z colon as you'll see all of these are z colon basically if you scroll up here, MCU, whatever this is, is what we're calling. We're calling that out. So when you add another one, you might, might just put another number, letter, name it, whatever you want. Uh, I just named mine MCUZ when I made this. But this is a trial and error thing. You're going to need to move your head over to this position. You have to have your XY fixed up first. Uh, you're going to need to do some homing override, which I already have set up in here. Uh, no matter where the head is at, it's immediately, as soon as you hit G28, it'll set the Z to zero. Uh, it's going to move to absolute mode. It's going to go up 15 millimeters in Z. That was why I had to do the Z zeros there. And then it's going to do a home on X and Y. It moves over to where my end stop switch is. This is not the inductive probe. This is the switch. Mine happens to be at this location. I use 3,000... Uh, millimeters a minute for travel moves. I actually need to change that, but this isn't my standard config. Like this isn't the config for my uh, Voron 2. This is just a copy of it. Uh, and then <coughs> we're going to do a Z28, a G28Z, or we're going to home Z. Uh, once it's homed, I'll, I move it up five millimeters and park it there. That's where it stop. That's where it stops. So uh, once that is done, you can move. I move to the middle of my bed because where do all your prints start? They start in the middle of your bed. I move to the middle of my bed. I start stepping down. I actually start with position end stop of zero. Uh, so that way it's just easy math. I, I home it. Go to the middle of the bed. And by homing it, it's going to do that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to set your Z. Move to the middle of the bed and start stepping it down. Uh, I put a piece of paper or actually a piece of cardstock that happens to be exactly... Uh, 0.2 millimeters big and then we can come over here. I go over here to the terminal yeah once once I have my nozzle at that point two, I look I do an M114 and I see where my Z is remember we're, we're not setting the Z uh, at point two. I just add uh, 0.2 to it or decrease depending on how you're looking at it 
you know, if it happens to be sitting at point two uh, when you when you do an M114, then that means your Z is at your Z switch is actually at zero zero. Um, you're perfect. Uh, my Z switch is not, and most people's aren't. Actually, let's let's do that split screen. We can use this. We can use these in conjunction with each other. But mine happens to be 1.9 millimeters above my bed. I'm using the new FSR uh, end stop switch. Uh, <coughs> we got it. We, we moved away from the Amaran switch. It just had too much variance uh, based on the temperature of the switch itself. These snap snap action switches, uh, the springs, internal springs inside. Uh, they change uh, how they how they operate uh, the amount of force required based on their temperature. So, uh, with the FSR switch that uh, you guys may or may not know yet, uh, it has been super repeatable. I can I can do a, a, a hot print, cold print, uh, never have to look. I haven't actually looked at a print start in a long time. Uh, we we do Z to minimum, so that's false. You can actually just comment that out. I leave it in. I like leaving things. Uh, there for people to be able to mess with or myself later on in the future and then we have the rest of the, the other three z motors you just gotta make sure they're on the right pins those are commented uh, I, I mentioned where i put mine where this config is used then we got to set up the inductive probe uh, i'm using the uh, z min pin end stop pin i'm using a shotsky diode uh, bat 85s are usually the way to go you want to make sure that when you put that diode in, you're going to put it on the switch, uh, the SW, um, the out. Uh, it's called something different uh, depending on what kind of inductive probe you have. But basically, you're going to have an input, you're going to have a V plus, you're going to have a V minus, and then you're going to have a, a switch. It's three wires. You know, the, the V minus could be called ground or GND. The V plus could be called VCC, uh, whatever that. It needs to be above 6 volt. Uh, so you cannot use the 5 volt coming out of your end stop pins. You need to use uh, something else. I use 24 volt to it uh, with the Shotsky diode. And you make sure that when you put it on the switch in line, uh, meaning uh, you have your sw your switch output basically going to the diode. Uh, when you look at the diode uh, from the side, it has a stripe on the top or the bottom. That stripe needs to be on the top, meaning. If, if you follow the path of the current coming from the sensor, it comes and it'll hit the top of that of that stripe on your diode. Because what it's doing is it's stopping uh, the power from coming through. Some power does come through, but it's not enough to go over the uh, switch value of on or off. Anyway, uh, back to what I was getting at. I have my probe hooked up on the Z-min pin on my MCU-Z end stop. And then these are just the offsets that are applied to that. Uh, I, I, per, I see a 0.195 uh, sensing distance from my bed. Uh, the inductive probe is 25 millimeters positive uh, away from the nozzle, and I probe at 5 millimeters a second. That's what the speed here is. I kind of covered the homing override already. Um, we have we were able to make our own macros in here, so I made a G32 macro. We're using that gantry level routine, uh, which is going to be right down here. I do it three times just to make sure that everything is copacetic. Then I do a home. Then I move it to the center of the bed. Uh, our gantry level, you need to have your gantry corners uh, identified. And this is dependent on where your zero zero is. So this is going to be different for everybody. You could probably use the ones I have if you have a 250, and it may or may not work halfway decent. Uh, but what I do is I actually take a metric ruler and I home the machine, go to zero zero and then measure from my uh, tool head, uh, your hot end, to the belts. And I get minus 59 in the X, minus 20 in the Y at zero. Then I go to max. Uh, for me, that's 250, 250, 245, 245. Depends on what stuff I have on it. And then I measure from there to the max belts. And I have 307 on the X, 305 on the Y. And then you put the points that you want to probe. I want to probe quite a bit inside. Uh, you got to remember that you, your probe is 25 millimeters away from the nozzle, so I'm probing at 50-50. Then I'm probing at 50, uh, 225, 200, 225, 225. That's where the probe location is going to be. Um, or no, I'm sorry, that's 5200. Gosh, it'd be 175 for the nozzle, 
25 millimeters from that is the probe, uh, and then 200, 200, and then 225. My probe location, this is more for the mesh bed leveling, but uh, that's how far the probe is from the nozzle. The speed that I do my uh, travel moves are at 200. That's millimeters a second. And then your horizontal Z move. Uh, this actually is how much to move up between probings, and I use 10 millimeters a second, kind of slow. I'm sorry, 10 millimeters, kind of tall. I'm, I'm getting the stuff mixed up. Uh, here's bed mesh. I'm not going to go into that. It, 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 it's here, it works, and if your bed is flat, after you do an gantry level using the gantry level routine, you don't need it. It just creates more, more time. Um, same with Z-Tilt. Uh, this is what got Clipper going uh, for the Voron. <laughs> And uh, we don't use it anymore either. I, I leave it there for nostalgic purposes, I guess. Uh, what I do use a lot of is I make my own G-Code macro. So I made a print start macro. Uh, so you always start it off with G-Code underscore macro space and then whatever you want to name it. Um, I put print start into my start uh, script in my slicers. I don't put anything else. Print, print underscore start. And it's going to run this every time I start a print. Uh, same with print end. I'm not going to go into explanation of what I'm doing here, uh, but basically, I home, I do a gantry level, I do one more gantry level, then I do a nozzle clean, then I do a home again, because I've just cleaned the nozzle off, so what's happened, I've taken whatever ABS or whatever filament might be on the bottom of my nozzle, knocked that off, and I want to make sure that my first layer is you know, as close to being accurate as possible without having to have any human interaction with my printer. My print end. Um, something I've recently added is turning the steppers off. I used to leave them on all the time and let them time out at 6,000 minutes, 6,000 seconds. And I've decided that with the accuracy of the gantry level, the nozzle clean, and the FSR switch, uh, I, I don't need to worry about that. I just rehome it every time. Not a big deal. Uh, I also made some unload filament, some load filament commands. I need to change these. I've been doing some PC stuff lately. And I have my speed or my, my temperature is set in here, which doesn't work so well for PC for for carbon fiber uh, polycarbonate. Here's my nozzle clean. It's a real simple. It just comes over, runs runs a uh, goes to Z3, and then runs the nozzle over the brush. Here is our extruder. Uh, this this is get a, this where a lot of people get mixed up here too. So um, it does some volumetric stuff. Uh, I just leave filament diam diameter at 1.75. I change it in the slicer if I'm going to do any changing. Uh, the big things here are you need to make sure your nozzle diameter is the nozzle is the diameter of your nozzle. Um, so if you put a bigger nozzle on, you want to change your nozzle diameter. Uh, otherwise, it's going to slow your machine down uh, due to volumetrics. Uh, I love pressure advance. Initially, I had my extruder not tuned so well, uh, and I had advances of like 0.15. I've got it down to 0.05. Uh, the default obviously a zero, no, no pressure advance. I, I, from the look ahead, I tripled the amount of look ahead time uh, to 30 milliseconds. So that's like no time and I see no extra load. Uh, from that, uh, the step distance you have to figure out. Um, everyone's extruder is going to be different. I just recently changed mine again. I, I did some math, extrude 200 millimeters. You know, if, if only, if 210 comes out when I expand to 200, I'm able to take you know do some cross multiplication and dividing and come up with an accurate step distance uh, you want to make sure this is right I'm using the Mobius 2 uh, you want to make sure that you have your sensor type uh, in here correctly so going back to clip, clipper documentation where do they have sensors I don't know that's the wrong one Somewhere he's got a list of sensors. Uh, I've never really needed to use them. If you look at the example config under extruder, extruder, I think he has a couple sensors uh, spelled out here. Pressure, advance, sensor type. See, he's got a couple of different sensor types listed here.
choose the correct type. Uh, if you have one of them Chinese sensors and you just don't know what the heck it is, I would recommend going with the one that I have on my bed, I think. Uh, but you need to make sure this is right. Um, it's not a bad idea to have one of them solder tip uh, calibrators to actually test the actual temperature, make sure that it's reading properly or that you're getting the proper temperature at the tip of your nozzle. Uh, if not, you can do some adjustments here. I'm not going to go into that. Um, PID tune. So with OctoPrint, so let's go back to the one that we installed. So with OctoPrint, right, there's some, there's some plugins you can, you can install. So let's go to the plugin manager. Um, I'm going to get more. A couple things that I like to have. Uh, so let's find some terminal stuff. Oh man, my, uh, my firewall is blocking some octopi here. It's gonna take me a minute to find what what's blocking it. it. Won't take me too long. Let's see here. So That's not gonna take. That's gonna take me longer than I thought. Oh, no. Well, you come in here. Uh, there we go. I'll just add the repository to my whitelist real fast. Shouldn't take real long. I don't do that. It's like, what's it, what are we doing? I ain't doing shit. All right. Well, the one we were talking about, I was looking at is Clipper. So we'll just, it's Octo Clipper. Let's we'll search for Octo Clipper. K L I P P E R. Octo Clipper. I want to go to the GitHub. And I need the, there you go. I believe that's what we use to install it. Paste that there, install, yep. And now it's installing. Oh, what the heck. Apparently, my firewall is stopping everything. That would install the plugin for Octo Clipper. Well, what I was going to say is when you install OctoClipper, which I kind of don't like it, it gives you this tab. It gives you a couple things that I do use. Uh, one of those is PID tuning. You just need to tell it what you're tuning. You're, like, you're tuning your extruder. What temp do you want? Whatever you named your extruder. Mine's called extruder. Uh, your, tar your, your target temp, and then hit start tuning. And it'll, it'll give you the values in terminal. 
you'll take those values because it's not going to save them for you. You'll take those values and you'll put those here on your PID for your extruder. See, that's the name I stuck in, extruder. Uh, this is a temperature, uh, a thermally, a thermally controlled fan for the extruder. Uh, this is not a part cooling fan. This is actually the hot end fan. Um, pretty simple and explanatory. Uh, same with my controller fan. Uh, right now, I'm just using it at the same time as this. <laughs> Excuse me. I hope to have that different in the future. Heated bed. Uh, what I was saying earlier is maybe this might work. This NTC 100K Beta 3950 might work for a lot of your Chinese 100K sensors. Uh, this happens to be the one that works for the Kenovo heater that it comes with. And it's very accurate. Uh, here's my part cooling fan. And then some stuff that I never got around to playing with. I just need to delete. Uh, here's your LCDs. I've added uh, the new stuff for the click wheel. Um, to, so the encoder works now. And I'm using the 128 by 64. Uh, by I think there's something else that I, you need to put in here as well. Uh, these are your main parameters. My maximum velocity is 500 millimeters a second. My maximum acceleration is 5,000. Uh, for, that's for X and Y. Your Z, uh, I have my max velocity as 50 millimeters a second and 400 uh, millimeters a second for my acceleration. My square corner velocity, I think the default is five. I have mine at 10. Um, idle timeout, this is once, once we hit 600 seconds, um, it'll execute this G code. And yeah, just having this, this in here for your display will give you the display menu in Clipper. Uh, God, I wish I, I wish I could. I wish there was more I could go through it with you guys. Um, it's kind of half-assing this, and this is probably a really big file now. If you got any comments or questions, which I'm sure you're going to have, uh, hop on our Discord. Uh, should put a shout out to Maglin. Go into the Clipper controller, uh, the Clipper Mini controller uh, building category, and uh, you know I check it. I check it once or twice a day. Sometimes I'm in there a lot. Sometimes I'm not in there at all for the day. But it just depends. Uh, if you guys found this useful, uh, I really hope it helped you. Uh, if, you if you didn't you think it's stupid, well, um, Clipper is awesome. Uh, okay, Kevin, who made it, is thought uh, he, had, he had a lot of forethought into how he was going to do his motion planner, how he was going to interact with all the uh, additional features that he's added to it, and he's made it very scalable, uh, very easy to add stuff to. Uh, Russian cat food was able to make the gantry level uh, Python script based a little bit on the on the Z tilt script uh, that Kevin whipped up, but uh, did that in the course of a day. Pretty simple, easy to add stuff to. Uh, we hope to get that added to the repository for too awful long. Uh, with that, I uh, don't think there's anything left to talk about. Um, if you want to make sure your Clipper is updated, uh, oops. So th you normally be at this directory when you first log in. Uh, like I said, you want to go into your Clipper directory. Do a git pull. Followed with the... Usually all you need to do is restart the Clipper service. Uh, but I believe he likes to recommend you... Go here to the FAC. All the way at the bottom is updating Clipper. Uh, I do this every time. So go into Clipper, do a git pull, and then uh, run the install script. Uh, that'll restart Clipper service. That'll do everything you need. Uh, if you end up having to add or replace the firmware on the Megas, uh, when you initially connect to the printer, you'll get a warning saying a uh, firmware warning in your Clipper here. Uh, or if it doesn't connect, you know, you just do a status, and it'll tell you what's going on. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say adieu. Now I have to get this set back up for my uh, MPCNC. I hope, I hope you like this. I hope you found it useful. You guys have a good one. And i got to turn this off.